Hey, thank you for joining me. Oh my goodness, it is a beautiful day today. It's a November day in Michigan. When you're in Michigan in November, it's really, I mean, it's its hit and miss weather-wise, but today is just one of those little rare blips of insanely beautiful weather. It's just such a gorgeous day. It's like a little gift that descends from heaven. Thank you. Anyway, speaking of wonderful days and warmth and golden hues and autumn, and heat and being outside i don't know here is a map i've made like an homage edward imhoff edward imhoff an amazing cartographer from the middle of the last century here's uh some hand penciled graphite hill shading that he did uh, here's another example edward imhoff just did wonderful work a swiss cartographer working in the middle part of the last century, as I said. And look at these examples of just rich hues and warmth and a sense of depth and de dimensionality. It's His work wasn't just technical, it was artistic. He blended art with his technique. Um, and here's his, what some say like a, a masterwork of his, the Wallensee area in Switzerland. So this is Edward Imhoff. Google him if you, if you aren't aware of his name or his work. Give that a Google and just be amazed. So here's Edward Imhoff, as an older fella. Here he is as a little kid, little Eddie. So he's just a little rascal here, but I mean, look what he's up to. At the age of 11, he's doing, he's doing school assignments that outpace anything I've ever done. And I'm a grown man. Just beautiful work. Edward Imhoff. And he also painted. I mean, he painted throughout his life. Here, here's a painting he did at the age of 14. Look at this. I mean, clearly this is someone who would go on to be a renowned geodesist. Look at that. Come on, he's 14 years old and he's painting, painting this. But also look at this. Look at this sense of light and shadow on the face of the piano. So, I mean, this is just a wooden piano. And at age 14, if I had a paintbrush, who knows what I'd come up with, but I'd just slab on some bronze. Hey, that's wood. But Edward Imhoff isn't painting wood. He's painting light and shadow the warm hues that are associated with wood. And we see a wooden piano with a polished surface. So here's another watercolor that he did later in life. He painted throughout his life and it informed his cartography. And I say to a lot of people, um, if you make maps, don't just make maps, right? Bring in your other passions because that is going to inform the work that you do and make it much better and give you ideas and add to your skill as a maker. Look at what he's doing with color here. The sense of atmospheric perspective where you've got these features in the foreground that are more bold and crisp, more saturated. And then as you delve into the distance, just as in real life, you're looking through more air and more water vapor and things become more muted in their hues as they're, uh, the light that's you know bouncing off of those features and making it into your eyeballs has gone through so much more atmosphere and scatter and it's bouncing around and of course that causes my scatter as we learned in remote sensing classes and that's why the sky is blue but this is why you get this sense of depth this atmospheric perspective look at these colors that he's using here just sample some of these chips here and, and take a closer look boy they're all so quite similar really but as you move into the distance you get this sense of a lightning and a kind of a bluish green effect in the foreground you have more bold colors and here it is back in the context of his original and beautiful watercolor now he's using intentionally uh this cooler palette to give a, an emotional sense for what he's seeing seeing but also what he's feeling you know can contrast that with another watercolor that he did um, at a higher elevation of more bare, rocky surfaces, cold. You look at this and you think, oh, this is, you, know, you can almost shudder a little bit. Here's a third example, a nice autumn day, kind of like I'm experiencing today. Look at these colors and the sense of warmth and coziness that it provides. Now contrast that with this. Very cool, sharp. And look at these in comparison with each, each other. Really, just, just from choosing different hues and different tones from his color palette. Now, he was a master of color, clearly, but he was also a master of texture. So this is a hill shade that he's he's done here for a map that he's working on. This is the underlying topographic layer that would be introduced 
you know, in the photographic process as they layer together their map elements back in the day. This was before people had satellite images of Earth. Uh, this is before the age of digital elevation models that we can drop into a geographic information system. Edward Imhoff is working from uh, a survey of elevation points, and he's interpolating those in his mind. He's imagining where the shadow falls. In this case, his imaginary light source is in the upper left area, which works for human beings for a lot of reasons. But look at the land features themselves. I mean, let's, let's isolate some of the more stark and sharp features. These are mountainous areas that are more rugged, and they peak up further. Um, but look at this. You've got this more rounded, more weathered area in the middle of this happens to be a Swiss canton. Softer tones. And then lastly, let's look at this, you know, at the other end of the spectrum. Very smooth, very subtle. These contours um, kind of come to life in a different way than the more rugged areas did. And he's doing that all in the same drawing. Now, as geographers and map makers and even cartographers now, we have a lot of tools in our toolbox. They're digital tools, not analog with a, a pencil in your hand like this. I mean, we're pushing pixels around and we're using algorithms. Here is a very basic hill shade that's digitally derived. So this was created in a geographic information system based on ele an elevation input, a traditional hill shade, so traditional, replicating a single um, wall of light in the upper left corner. Um, there's another technique, you know, there's a, a million techniques, but another technique is multi-directional. So it more than one light source all kind of working together, which is a little bit more like what we see in the real world. We don't have the single pinprick or wall of light in one area just blasting the landscape. You know, the light bounces around in the atmosphere. Um, you've got uh, light coming from all directions, really. And this helps to inform features in all directions, but it also helps pop out the more rounded, gentle areas. This is an alternate technique. So, uh, technique, this is multi-directional. So there's Imhoff's rendition of this area, this geographic area. This is showing the same area, this same area of Switzerland. And again, in the middle is our current tools, traditional single point light source, hill shade, and then on the right is the multi-directional algorithm. Let's take a closer look at the Wallensi uh, panel. This is, it shows you what a scientist slash artist Edward Imhoff was. What do I mean by that? Well, let's dig in. We isolate only the light facing portions of his landscape. Look at this palette that he's using, the color palette that he's dipping his brush into to paint these light facing sides is much different than the shaded areas. So here is an isolation of the areas of Edward Imhoff's imagined shade. It's a very different set of colors that he's dipping his brush into. And of course, again, that's informed by his experience as a painter using hue to connote a sense of warmth and a sense of cool. So here we are back uh, in that landscape painting, but if we, let's blur our eyes and we don't have to pretend, I'll blur it for you. So let's blur our eyes and you can see where areas are pushed back in elevation, lower areas of elevation versus higher areas of elevation. What's going on here? The lower areas of elevation are clearly more greenish blue and the areas that pop through that atmosphere and are closer to our eyes and have less um, light scatter. So here we are um, looking only at those higher elevations. Look at look at this uh, palette. It's really a pretty uh, minimal palette. He's just using a few ochres and yellows and, and whites. Contrast that with these lower elevations. So many blues and greens. A very different color palette based on elevation. So not just the angle of sunlight you know, sun and shadow. This is just elevation. Lower elevations look much different than higher elevations. And again, it's that sense of atmospheric perspective that he's bringing to his work because he's experienced in representing the world artistically and knows the little brain hacks that help us associate things that are near with things that are far, and he's applying that. So here is some satellite imagery of Switzerland. 
Edward's home country. And here is a traditional hill shade. Now, I sampled some of the colors from Edward's, Edward's higher elevation zones, and it looks to be about like this in my estimation. So if I were to steal some of the colors that he's using in high elevations to be sunlit versus shaded, you get this interesting transition of, of gold, and then it fades into nothing, and you can kind of see the underlying imagery in my estimation, and then there's like this blue, and then this kind of deep um, crimson, like a, a muted crimson in his shadow areas at higher elevation. Now, if we were to apply this color gradient, you know, you're not stuck with white to gray to black. You're not stuck with this grayscale. That's just the default grayscale. Let's apply this color scheme to that grayscale image and see what it looks like overlaying atop some imagery. It looks like this. Kind of interesting, right? You know, you, immediately you get a sense for, oh, you know, I've got higher mountainous elevations here that are getting blasted by the sun and cooler areas of shade. It's already, it's kind of fun and interesting, but we can do more. So here's that image all by itself again. Now here is a version of hill shade that is multi-directional. Can you lose maybe a little bit of the first order structure of the very rugged areas, but you really bring in some nuance in those medium sort of topographic areas. If we were to think about the color scheme here, it's multi-directional, so it's coming from a lot of different areas. And if we paint this um, with, with a, a brush like this instead of a white to black brush, it looks like this when you overlay it atop the imagery. Uh, very interesting here. Um, here's what it looks like when we do both of those hill shade techniques at the same time and we just drop the two layers on top of each other. Now we're getting something that's pretty interesting. Um, we're, we're honoring the smoother undulating areas with our multi-directional. We're honoring the very crisp first order rugged mountain areas with our traditional hill shade. Um, and we're seeing through in those middling areas to the, the texture and the tones of the satellite imagery. So here's that satellite imagery. We're not done. Uh, we're almost done, but visually, you know, we've, we've got a ways to go. Here is that source data that I was talking about, a digital elevation model. Now, a digital elevation model just paints low areas as being black, high areas as being white, and the gradient of elevation in between is all the grayscale. So naturally, you can see what's low and what's high. Now, when I sample Imhoff's work with an eyedropper and I see his lower elevations, they tend to have this bluish green it's more muted and then that fades away as you get into the higher elevations until you have so you you fade to nothing which when you apply that to our digital elevation model it looks like this you know you're, you're fading out the low areas and you can see the upper areas really crisply where the imagery shines through fully here are the three techniques that i've just described so far on the bottom is that traditional hill shade the middle is multi-directional hill shade and the top is that sort of atmospheric perspective that we get by applying a gradient to the raw digital elevation model. And then behind it all, you know, is the imagery, of course. But what happens when we put all these things on top of each other? Something sort of magical. You get this sense of warmth and cool. You get a sense of depth and atmospheric perspective, like you're looking through something, something tangible, something real. And we'll drop in some borders here and take a look at what is Switzerland. And here's a couple closer looks at some areas you know, labeled and annotated in the way that Imhoff might have done it. Here's that same technique applied to the Grand Canyon with its really stark, abrupt uh, shift in elevation. Here's an example where I've applied the technique to various national parks in the United States and shown them in their comparative scale to each other and where they live on the surface of the country. So here is much of the United States, but if I'm working with an elevation image service, it's happy to just re-render and recompute as I zoom in. And so we've got a technique, a solution that scales quite well. Here's an example of the Columbia River Gorge near where my sister lives. It's just a beautiful area and I thought it'd be a good 
case in point for showing you all how to build up this technique in ArcGIS Pro. And I've, I've made a lot of resources for you. So if you visit this link, esriurl.com slash Imhoff, you'll see a blog post that I've shared where I give you a style file, which is like a CSS file for your data. You just apply it to your data and it looks a certain way, which is very cool. Or you can just be a big cheater and download my source ArcGIS Pro project and start panning and zooming and seeing what I imagine Imhoff may have painted the earth like if you were pushing and pulling pixels like we are today. So give this a look, download those assets if you feel like it. And up next, I'm going to start building up a map for you right here. And you can follow along if you like.